Hey there folks, Rel here. In this episode of Art of Stealth, we are going to be talking about the different types of smoke in Planetside 2. Before we get started though, I wanted to announce the winner of the $15 worth of station cash from the uh, Submit Your Own Sneakiest Moment competition we did on the last Art of Stealth. And the winner of that was KaivaCore, and you can click on the image below to, uh, to take a look at the video he submitted, and there's also a link in the description. So, first things first, I wanted to mention that I think smoke is extremely flawed right now. It has its uses, but anyone can simply spam their Q key through the smoke and then stick that uh, happy red triangle above your head. So, really, very very rarely can you actually rely on smoke to keep you out of harm's way. But there are three different types of smoke in this game, the smoke grenade, the underbarrel smoke grenade launchers, and lock-on disabling smoke produced by vehicles. Each of the three differ slightly in deployment and effectiveness, but I'm actually only going to cover the infantry-based smoke, so we're going to go into the characteristics of each method, and then we'll cover the general strategies and builds that make it the most effective. Smoke grenades are only available to the light assault class, and I do actually use them on my drifter setup as you'll see in some videos to come. It's worth mentioning that smoke grenades and other non-lethal grenades like flashbangs don't have grenade indicators when they're thrown, so an enemy won't see a blinking red grenade icon and know to run away. Smoke grenades don't bounce nearly as much as uh, the standard frag, uh, they in fact act like a grenade should and not like a bouncy ball. It takes roughly 4 seconds to arm the grenade, so if you throw it on the ground, it actually won't start releasing smoke until 4 seconds later, but if you throw it through the air and it has a uh, the travel time is longer than 4 seconds, then it will start releasing the smoke on impact. So after that, the smoke releases very slowly, and I'd say it takes about 4 seconds for there to be a uh, substantial cloud, and then the smoke begins to disperse after 15 seconds. And we're going to call the 11-ish seconds of actual usefulness the effective time of a smoke cloud. Another thing to note about both smoke grenades and smoke grenade launchers is that, like with many things in Planetside 2, there is a rendering issue at great distances. If you throw or fire the grenade outside of the render distance, it will simply cease to exist, at least in the testing that I've done. Smoke grenades are decent for a few different purposes, like uh, if you're guarding a terminal or a generator, you can toss one in the same room as you, and when you anticipate the enemy coming, you can uh, you can get the jump on them. Just make sure you're not standing in the area they're likely to queue spam, or you'll be wasting your advantage. The most entertaining use of smoke grenades, I think, are to force huge groups of allies to grow a pair and move up. When people are clumped together, you know, huddling like in a corner and they're exchanging bullets, just toss smoke like in their way and it, it provides cover to mask their movements, sure, but mostly I just think that it frustrates people, so they usually end up uh, just running through the smoke and sometimes to their deaths, but either way it's pretty funny. But I think that the most effective use of a smoke grenade is when the enemy is entrenched in an area especially during long distance engagements where enemies are unlikely to be using night vision scopes. Just drop a smoke grenade on top of a group and they'll scatter like cockroaches. And this is um this is really great for masking your presence as it's hard to tell the difference between friend or foe inside of a cloud. That is until you start shooting people. Currently I'm using smoke grenades in conjunction with a smoke grenade launcher, but I've actually been debating about using uh, about stopping the use of the smoke grenade entirely and just switching over to flash grenades as soon as I gather up the uh, the certs for it. Smoke grenades just take too long to deploy and it's uh, it's just it's much quicker, easier, safer if you fire off a couple rounds from the uh, smoke grenade launcher and you get the pretty much the same effect. And that brings us to the underslung grenade launcher. It's a rail attachment that's available on the Solstice Select Fire for Vanu Sovereign, the Gauss Compact S for NC, and the Track 5S for Terran Republic. And because these carbines are available to more than just light assault, uh, engineers can join in on the smoke spamming fun. 
And this would actually be extremely useful for engineers if turrets had infrared optics, uh, but you know, that's wishful thinking. A couple of notes about underslung smoke grenade launchers is that they are uh, they're much easier to aim than the standard smoke grenade and they detonate instantly on contact. You get two smoke grenades to start and they can actually be refilled by ammo packs. So that means that an engineer can be extremely useful for setting up quick screens and doing that whole uh, make your allies grow pair thing that I mentioned earlier. Something that I should probably mention about smoke spamming though is that ammo packs eventually will stop giving you uh, under barrel grenades. And this goes for the standard underslung grenade launcher as well. But there is kind of a uh, an interesting way around this issue. I'll show in this clip uh, I'm standing on an ammo pack and I'm going to spam a lot of smoke and normally this would uh, it would only last for a, a little bit and then I simply wouldn't be able to get grenades from the ammo pack anymore. But I'm going to Instead, uh, I'm going to fire off a round, then I'm going to switch to my primary by pressing 1, and then I'm going to switch to uh, the grenade launcher again by pressing 2. And the grenade launcher is going to reload, and then everything is good to go again. As I understand though, you have to do this after every shot for it to work consistently. And so what it's doing is it, it's breaking up the animation, and for some reason that uh, it'll reset your, your grenade count or something like that. So if you want to spam smoke grenades forever, just uh, do that nifty little trick. And, um, and you'll be good to go. Underslung smoke has uh, an effective duration of about 12 seconds, and that starts on contact, right? So the cloud is actually a, just a little bit smaller than the standard smoke grenade. And something kind of interesting is that the smoke cloud will also emanate from any surface it makes contact with. So unlike smoke grenades that need to be sitting on the floor to actually start poofing out the stuff, it'll actually stick a cloud to uh, a wall, you know, if you'd like. And this has some minor uses in itself. If you're dropping behind a group of enemies, but you don't want enemies further back to notice you doing it, then you set up a screen between you and them. So this way enemies won't see me killing their friends inside the cloud, at least not right away. So those are the two types of smoke covering in this video, and here are some tips to help you get the most effect out of them. The first one is always use a night vision scope with smoke. That's pretty self-explanatory. It'll let you see right through it, and uh, it just gives you just a huge, huge advantage. Something to note is that it's easier for people outside the cloud to see in than for people inside the cloud to see out. So if you are still inside of a cloud when it starts fading away, chances are you're going to get shot before you're able to shoot anyone else. So uh, you just gotta position yourself accordingly. And prepare to be spammed. When a smoke cloud appears, enemies at range will likely start spamming the Q key at it because they know that people are going to be using it to mask their movement. And this can actually work against you, it can make you an easy target. But there are a couple ways around that. You can actually use smoke as a distraction, so smoke, uh, smoke is an anomaly. So people will try to deal with it in uh, whatever way kind of makes sense for them. So their focus either way is going to be on the cloud, at least for a little while. So placing a cloud away from where you are can actually help you by taking the focus off of your location. If you are using a cloud for cover to tr cross from, say, one building to another, like across uh, an open road or field, then a solid screen between you and the enemy positions are actually the safest way to do it. It creates a buffer, it won't obscure your vision, and enemies won't be able to see you uh, from the outside looking in, like we mentioned earlier. But if you are wading through it or sitting in it, that is a different matter. If you're sitting in the cloud, don't stay directly across from entryways because enemies will ping you easily and you'll lose the advantage immediately. So uh, if there's a door in front of me, I don't want to sit like in a corner. You know, Even though I'm shrouded by smoke, enemy's going to walk through the door, he's going to press Q, and then he's going to see a little red thing, and then he's going to shoot at it, and that's pretty much it. So I want to hide off to the side, you know, kind of still in um, you know those sort of camper locations that we tend to utilize but do it in the smoke cloud, so you have uh, just a distinct advantage from that point. So as far as uh, builds are concerned, if I'm using smoke grenades on my light assault, I use it with uh, a drifter pack and also underslung smoke grenade launchers. Dropping smoke on an enemy's head lets me observe how the enemy is going to react before I drop in, and drifter packs are great for this because you can kind of just sit and fly around and hover and wait for people to kind of make up their minds about what they're doing. So, and then I'll drop from the, uh, 
the sickly gazelle, as it were. I'll drop behind him and then kind of work into the cloud or around the cloud. It's, it's kind of a one-trick pony in the bigger fights, but it's pretty satisfying nonetheless. On my engineer, if I'm using a smoke grenade launcher, I'm, uh, I'm setting up smoke grenades to either initiate rushes or to mask an area as I run in and place a proximity mine. But I think that is about it for this episode. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please feel free to like, subscribe, and tell your friends about the channel. I'm always interested in hearing what you'd like to see reviewed uh, in Planetside 2 because it is a pretty big game, so there is a lot to look at. Um, if you just want to leave me a comment, you know that'll help me kind of focus my efforts towards uh, towards what people are interested in, in hearing about. So that is about it. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.